Hey all, welcome to Parker's Reefs. On today's episode, we're gonna talk battery backups. And I mean battery backups for all scenarios out there. So regardless of your aquarium, I've got a battery backup solution for you. All right, guys, thanks for joining me on another episode of Parker's Reefs. And I guess it almost doesn't matter whereabouts you are in the world at the moment because uh, you're either in some cracking heat wave in uh, summer or you're uh, in the depths of cold like we are here in Australia at the moment. The threat of power outages are always there for reef tanks and it's um, something that can keep you awake at night worrying about whether your tank has power. Now, if you have seen what I did in my uh, dream reef tank, I built what I called the mega battery backup system for my uh, dream reef tank, which has absolutely everything on that system completely automatically backed up without having to have anything at the tank. It's a complete bespoke system set up in my garage with multiple large capacity batteries that automatically powers that tank circuit should there be any brownout or blackout, which is absolutely ideal. However, I recognize that is not always within people's budget or sometimes it's just completely overkill. So when the situation arose for me to do a battery backup system for my Cade Frag tank, I thought it'd be a great opportunity to go through the different scenarios out there that you can use to back up your various bits of equipment on your reef tank. And um, some of them are easy, some of them are a little bit more complicated, some of them are cheap, some of them are a little bit more expensive, but we'll go through all the options and I'll finish off by showing you exactly what I've got on my Cade system and how long it lasts for. So let's jump into it. Okay, obviously one of the first things you're gonna require for a battery backup solution is a battery or batteries. Now, this is something that's gonna be different for absolutely every use case out there, depending on uh, the amount of equipment you wanna run, how long you wanna run it for, what the space is like near your tank, and uh, finally, what kind of budget you have. Now, there's plenty of options out there. Traditionally, battery backup systems use sealed lead acid batteries, including Ecotech Marine's own battery backup and even some of the ice cap and other solutions out there. Nothing wrong with those batteries at all. They're a great affordable option. They're relatively small, they're sealed, so you're not gonna have any acids or anything near the tank there. You do need to be mindful though that uh, even though they're rated at a capacity, once you discharge them below about 50% of that capacity, you start to uh, shorten their lifespan there. But um, all in all, a very good affordable option. Of course, you can also go some larger deep cycle batteries or car batteries, whatever the need may be. Like I said, it's gonna be different for every single use case out there. I can show what I use for my system here I picked up this little FPV power lithium battery. This is um, completely not endorsed. I picked this up secondhand off Facebook Marketplace. The guys at FPV power don't even know this video exists, but um, I really like the amount of power, the size of this battery, the fact that it has a battery management system built in, which is super important if you are using things like lithium batteries to make sure that everything is safe. And um, the price was kind of right, even though it was second hand, I picked it up for $150, which um, is near about half the new price. These guys do make smaller options. They do a seven amp hour one as well for $150 brand new, including the charger and all that. But um, this guy came up second hand for me and uh, you'll see a little bit later where I've got it in the K tank, why it's a perfect option for me. But like I touched on for you guys out there, basically you're looking for a decent quality, reasonable capacity 12 volt battery. The bigger the capacity, the longer it's gonna last. That's probably the, the crux of it. Personally, I like sealed batteries. I don't want anything with any sort of acid or anything near my tank. And um, if you can have something that's gonna mount neatly in your cabinet, that's always gonna work well too. You don't just want this random stack of batteries in your lounge room next to your reef tank. Because realistically, when we're talking battery backups, you want this completely installed at the tank. You don't wanna have to go grab the battery out of the car or something like that to hook it up. You want this system to automatically turn on when you're at work or in the middle of the night. Whenever that power goes out, we wanna make it automated and that's the plan here. So I think we've got batteries out of the way. If you do have any questions about what sort of battery you think would be suitable for your use case, be sure to pop it in the comment section down below. I do personally reply to every single question down there and um, I'll do my best to work out which battery option I think would work for you. But uh, let's move on to the different methods of controlling equipment using these batteries here. All right, the next question we have to ask is what equipment do we want to run in the event of a power outage? Now, I'm not gonna cover things like heaters or other AC controlled equipment here. If you need to run AC equipment in a battery backup, realistically, your option is a UPS or something like I did on my dream reef tank and that's the mega battery backup. It does require an electrician and it does require fairly large and expensive equipment. You can purchase off the shelf at Officeworks or something like that, a small UPS, which will automatically run AC devices. 
straight away if there is a power outage, but realistically they don't tend to last all that long. They are designed to turn your computer off and save all your files safely in the event of a power outage, not keep things running for an extended period of time. So if AC devices are your only option, check out the Mega Reef battery backup. Other than that, we wanna focus on things like wave makers to keep water movement in the tank. I personally like to look at return pumps and skimmers. I find the return pump keeps mechanical filtration happening as well as providing a little bit more water flow and aeration. And of course, the skimmer is gonna give us maximum oxygen, which personally is what I think is the main problem in a power outage. We lose all the oxygen in the water and that's when things start to turn pretty nasty. So water movement, oxygen is what we're gonna focus on. So we're gonna focus this video on wave makers, skimmers and return pumps. Let's move into some of the options to control those. All right, starting at the complete easy end of the scale and using my example and an example that exists everywhere out there in the reefing world, the wave maker from Ecotech Marine called the Vortec is the easiest thing under the sun to provide a battery backup for. You don't need any kind of electronic wizardry at all. They've done all the hard work building the battery backup circuit for you right into the controller. You literally plug a 12 volt source into that extra little connector on the bottom of the controller and your wave maker is now battery backed up. It's as simple as that. When the mains goes out and that 24 volt supply drops off, it'll look for the 12 volt supply and it will automatically switch to battery backup mode and power your uh, wave maker from there. So in my instance, I literally just have to make a connection from this battery to each one of my MP40s on there and this will control them. I will add a fuse in line just in case something was to go wrong. I don't want to short circuit the battery just for safety's sake. All right, now if you have wave makers that are not Vortex, but they are DC powered, hold on, I've got a solution for you guys as well. I will get to it just after I explain the return pump solution for my Cade Frag Tank. All right, now speaking of that solution for the return pump on my Cade Frag Tank, it uses another product from Ecotech Marine. It is the Vectra M2 return pump. Now, it has very similar, an extra little port in the controller which is made for battery backup. However, the guys at Ecotech Marine have been a little bit tricky. They've required that to be 24 volts, mainly because that pump usually draws 36 volts when the power is on. So our little 12 volt battery here is not gonna get the job done. There's a couple of ways you can approach that. Ecotech Marine do sell a booster cable. We'll connect up to a 12 volt battery. It'll give you 24 volts at your uh, Vectra. You can plug that straight in and you can run your, um, you can run your, bat your 12 volt battery in a battery backup mode on the Vectra, it works an absolute treat. I personally didn't go that path just because um, availability and lockdowns and things like that. I was able to use a DC to DC step up converter. Basically allows me to dial in what output voltage I want from a 12 volt source. I picked it up for $16 from JCAR. I think it's normally 20, but uh, it was on sale for $16 and does the job absolutely beautifully. And uh, it has nice little screw terminals, super easy to work with and allows me to run a 24 volt Vectra battery backup solution off a 12 volt battery. Okay, okay, I did promise that this video would cover all DC powered backup devices, not just Ecotech Marine. So I guess we need to get to the point where I'm gonna show you the solution that I've gone for for my MaxBec Jump Skimmer, which is 24 volts DC operated, but has absolutely no battery backup port in the controller or anything like that. Now, there are, I'm gonna go over three different options you can use here. They essentially all are the same concepts. They are a device that has a mains DC power coming in, a battery backup DC power coming in, and then just one output going to your device. Now they all work off a type of relay. The easiest option out there probably would be something like the Tunzi safety connector. It works exactly as I just described. You hook up your mains to one side, you have your battery connected to the other side, and you have one output coming to your pump. Again, it needs to be a DC powered pump, guys. I can't reiterate that enough. That's an off-the-shelf option you can get from your local fish shop or online. Whoever carries tons of items will either have it or be able to get it for you. If you don't wanna go that path, there are some eBay equivalents out there. I'll put some things on screen now and some links below if you'd like to do a little bit of DIY yourself. Basically, they normally just have screw terminals. You hook up the battery side, you hook up the main supply side, and then you hook up your device that you're wanting to run from there. Easy peasy. I've gone a little bit more DIY route and I've picked up a double pole, double throw relay, which essentially does exactly that. It basically has a set of eight terminals on it. 
Two terminals are just for power to turn the relay on and off. The other three basically give you a positive side and a negative side, and you've got three coming in. You've got power coming in, both a positive and a negative from the uh, main supply. You have a positive and a negative from the battery, and then you have a positive and a negative coming out. And depending on whether there is power supplied from that mains connector or not, it will pick the mains if there is, and if there's not mains power, it'll pick the battery. Sounds a bit complicated, but I promise it's not that bad. It's quite simple to do. In fact, we might jump in now to have a look at all three of these solutions in place in my very own setup on the Cade Frag Tank. Let's have a look at how I fabricated this little bit of battery backup for my system now. All right, this is the, uh, I guess you'd call it the three-step solution I've got for uh, my personal tank. It all starts with the battery itself here. Power comes into the battery from a charger lead, which literally just connects straight into it. It's got its own little safety devices in there, but all power coming out of the battery is going through this fuse here. This is a 10 amp hour fuse, and it's a little holder to make it easy to replace should I need to, with a little LED status light that tells me if the fuse is blown. Now, the first step of my three-step solution is the really simple one. I've got three leads coming out here that all go to my uh, three MP40s. They're just a straight 12 volt supply through that fuse. Now, the MP40 QDs from Ecotech got all the smarts built in. They can have their AC powered, uh, I guess their AC supplied power connected as well as their DC supplied power connected. And it'll only use the DC supplied power connected when the power goes out. So that's super easy. I literally just have them connected up to the battery from the fuse and uh, job done. Where things get a little bit more interesting is when I want to run the Vectra off the battery. Now the Vectra actually needs a 24 volt supply and this battery is only 12. Now, Ecotech do make a battery booster cable and it's not overly expensive. I just got a little impatient waiting for one and decided I could make my own. So I got this little uh, DC to DC power boost module. When I connect that up to the power, you'll be able to see what it does. What it does is it takes a voltage in, which at the moment is 12.7 volts from this battery, and converts it to a DC out. So it then has a little dial here that I can adjust. I can just turn that down a little bit. Yeah, whoop, went a little too far. 24, 24.1, I'll just turn it up a touch more. 24.1 volts coming out. Now that makes it perfect to hook straight up into my uh, Vectra. That will give it 24 volts coming from a 12 volt battery and it'll only use that power in the event of a power outage. Super, super simple. Now, onto the third and final step of my uh, battery backup solution and probably the most complicated part of it all is this double pole, double throw relay. Now I'm using this to power my skimmer that has absolutely no battery backup capabilities built into it whatsoever. It is a max spec jump skimmer, but it would work with any other DC powered skimmer. In this instance, it's a 24 volt DC skimmer. So I've also tapped into the 24 volts out from my little DC to DC converter here. And what I have here is this double pole, double throw relay. Now what that means is it has two completely separate sides and it has two different options coming into it. One of those options is selected when there is power supplied to it. And the other one is selected when there is not power supplied to it. So as you can imagine, I have the skimmer power come in here from the AC supplied mains. That comes into this uh, double pole, double throw relay here. And it also jumps over to the uh, two top contacts up here. I also have my battery powered supply coming in here. And then last but not least, I have the power out here. Now what that does is depending on whether there is power supplied via the mains or not, if there is power from the mains, it goes straight through this relay and comes out to the uh, skimmer itself over here. If there is not power from this connection at the mains, it pulls power from the battery and sends it out to the skimmer here. And I'll show that in operation when we get to the tank, but it's a um, pretty simple little solution, not expensive at all. It's like a $7 relay. This little uh, relay holder costs an additional $9. I didn't technically need it. It just made it a little bit easier. It gave me some bigger screw terminals to work with rather than soldering onto the uh, relay itself. But uh, that is the system there. It all looks a little bit complicated here and a little bit messy, but um, I'll tidy it up and I'll pop it into a little hobby box to keep it all neat and tidy. And then we'll go set it up on the tank and see how long this little battery here can power three MP40s, a Vectra M2, and a jump skimmer at 100% power. I'm curious to find out too. So let's tidy it up and go get into it. 
All right, let's check out the final installed solution here on the Cade Frag Tank. If I open up the power center, there's nothing overly obvious there that's changed. If you look really closely, you'll notice there's an extra plug going to each one of the MP40 controllers. And there's also one there that's labeled Vectra because it has the 24 volts going to the Vectra controller. Likewise, the one to the skimmer down here is the same. I could probably tidy that excess wire up a little bit more, but um, when you uh, don't look too closely, you just pan back. It's super neat and tidy. Now, I have added an extra thing up here for battery charge. Obviously, um, in the event of a uh, power outage, that won't be uh, charged, but uh, all in all, everything looks re works really neatly. You'll see when I switch the uh, left MP40 power off, it automatically switches over to battery power and all is well. Put the power back on, she comes back on. Likewise for the, uh, let's have a look at the return pump, which is this guy over here. Turn the power off to him, you'll notice that he automatically switches over and starts running on battery power. Give him his mains power back, and as expected, returns to normal. Interestingly, I do find with the uh, return pumps, they do actually turn off for about one second when it goes from uh, battery to uh, mains and mains to battery, but um, it picks back off right where it left off. The skimmer is an interesting one with the relay. There's a short delay, so if I turn the skimmer off, it actually begins its countdown again. So the skimmer will do a 10 second countdown and then it powers up again just to give it its soft start. But um, that's running completely off battery power there and doing a treat. Here it goes, she'll power up 100% as if there was no interruption power at all. Interestingly, when I switch the um, skimmer power back on, it doesn't do the same uh, delay. It just powers on as if nothing had uh, gone wrong at all. But um, as I said, there's probably nothing overly different in the uh, power center there. If you pan over here into the uh, cabinet itself, you'll see why I like this battery so much. There it is, sitting up there, the FPV power battery, sitting on top of one of the uh, power bricks there. Super small and neat solution. Right up the end there is the box that I put all the wires into. On the far end, it has the uh, three connectors for the MP40, one connector for the Vector, and one connector for the skimmer coming out. At this end, it has a connector to the battery, a connector to the battery charger, and a connector to the uh, skimmer power in. All in all, a pretty neat solution that keeps everything running exactly the way you want it to. So. Uh, I guess there's nothing really to do other than to get a uh, stopwatch out, set the time lapse up and see how long this battery can power these five devices for. Let's give it a shot. All right, first step is to turn off the uh, battery charger. Then we'll turn off the, the skimmer. Turn off the, uh, before you notice the skimmer has gone into countdown because it uh, had to switch from AC power to battery power. So it's already starting to convert over. Left hand MP40 is going. Let's get the middle MP40 switched over to battery. The right MP40 switched over to battery. And last but not least, the return pump switched over to battery. We'll hit start. Let's see how long this battery lasts. All right, I've just flicked it over to time lapse mode because hopefully this will go for about two or three hours and uh, you don't need to watch that like uh, watching paint dry. But one thing I will point out while the sun sets in the background there is the uh, Vortec controllers have this nifty little feature which shows you the state of charge of your battery. The right hand side light shows 100%, the left hand side shows 0%, it's a bit of a tongue twister. You can see now as we approach two hours, the batteries are around 50% charge, which means things are on track to reach my two to three hour goal without any problems at all. What an impressive little system. This did not cost very much money at all and was quite easy to put together. And I must admit, power outages of two or three hours or more are incredibly rare here. So uh, knowing that this is gonna keep things operational whilst I'm uh, not home is an absolute win in my books. All right, I'm just gonna try and jump in the uh, frame here. You can see the uh, MP40s have controller has stopped and they have stopped spinning. We're a good three and a quarter hours in. Um, I did notice this one in particular, for some reason, was always a spot behind the others, but um, I'll just stop that and get that aside so I can get in there. Now, interestingly, the um, skimmer and the return pump are still going at full speed, um, so the, I guess the, the voltage booster is giving these two guys enough to keep going, but uh, obviously these guys have decided it was enough, so what I'm going to do is just put the power back on, so I'll switch the skimmer back on, it's power, it should just keep running which it has, now that's not gonna be drawing battery power. Same with the return, when I flick the return, 
We go back to standard operation, and then with the three MP40s, they should come back to life. I'll even put the battery charger back on so I can get some juice back in that battery in case we do get a power outage in the short term future. But um, I'm guessing at three and a quarter hours for uh, five devices, we're talking three MP40s, a return pump and a skimmer going at uh, their full normal speed is um, pretty impressive out of a battery the size of my fist. All right, guys, there you have it. That is the battery backup options and what I personally set up on my Cade Frag Tank. Let me know what you think. If you've got any better alternatives or just let me know what you're running on your system. Hopefully this video has been of help for you guys out there wondering what to do, whether you've got something super easy like the Ecotec Vortex, where you can just literally plug a 12 volt accessory in there and uh, it will automatically switch should the power go out. Or if you've got something a little bit more bespoke and you need that double pole, double throw relay system that allows you to automatically switch between uh, AC mains power and battery backup power, whatever it may be, hopefully it was of help to you guys out there. If it was, be sure to give the video a thumbs up. If you have any questions, comments, feedback at all, pop it in the comment section down below. I must admit, I'm not the smartest electronics guy on the planet. So if you think I've done something wrong or you've got a better alternative, I'd love to hear from you about it. I do personally reply to each and every comment on there. So uh, don't be shy. I reach out to uh, everyone that takes the time to reach out to me. Last but not least, if you're yet to subscribe to the channel, I personally appreciate it. If we can keep striving towards our goal of 25,000 uh, subscribers, that would be huge. But uh, other than that, guys, I will leave things at that. I do have more videos coming in this uh, stream of uh, disastery backup plans for uh, your reef tank, including a uh, little device that will let you know if the power has gone out. That'll be coming in an upcoming video, so uh, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that one. Other than that, guys, I will wrap things up here. Thank you so much for watching. Till next time, stay safe and keep reefing. Bye.